Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 7th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I think it was last week that BGP, the border gateway protocol that controls routing on the internet, was in the news again because traffic that was really just supposed to go from the U.S. West Coast to the East Coast was routed through China. Oracle has a nice blog of its internet intelligence team by Doug Motry, and it goes into some detail about how things like this can happen and why this may not necessarily be all malicious, but just a mistake. So it's always difficult, of course, to speculate over motivation, but one of the things that Doug brings up in his blog post is that Verizon, with its presence in Asia and some of the peering relationships it maintains, it is actually possible that a leak like this happens accidentally. The problem with routing on the internet is that it often doesn't really consider sort of geographic distance, but really more logical distance, number of hops and really what's cheaper, which often results in ISPs trying to find the first spot possible to hand traffic over to another company to then finally route it to its destination. But well, overall, a good reminder that this is why we worry about things like TLS and the details about TLS configurations and the like. So make sure traffic is encrypted and encrypted well as soon as it leaves your system. And Google today released a security update for Android. That's the usual monthly update. As common for Google, you'll get it in various packages. One that just includes sort of the core security updates, one that includes security updates for the operating system, plus drivers that are specific to Google sold devices. Now, one important part about this particular update is that this is the last update that you will see for Nexus 5. X and Nexus 6P. With this, you will no longer see any security updates for these devices, so probably time to look for a new one. These devices are about three years old, I believe. Now, Google recently started requiring that manufacturers of any mobile devices that are using Android are supporting them for at least two years. But beyond this, of course, it's up to the manufacturer for how long they do want to provide security updates. Now, talking about vulnerabilities in mobile devices, one of the high profile vulnerabilities that was patched in the last iOS update was a vulnerability in FaceTime that does allow for arbitrary code execution if you are accepting a malicious FaceTime call. A proof of concept exploit has now been made available by the Google researcher who originally discovered this vulnerability. So if you haven't upgraded yet to iOS 12.1, it's about time that you do so. And Andrea Barisani, a researcher with F-Secure, found an interesting vulnerability in U-Boot. U-Boot is a bootloader that essentially allows you to load kernel images and the like. And it appears to be particularly popular with small devices. Now, one job that U-Boot tries to accomplish is that it verifies whether or not the kernel images it loads are authentic. And it does this by checking the usual cryptographic hack. Now, this is all good, but U-Boot itself contains a vulnerability that allows you to load a kernel image that is large enough to actually overwrite U-Boot or part of it, which then, of course, can be used to bypass this integrity check. Now, U-Boot calls this feature Verified Boot and essentially sort of what you usually see called Secure Boot on other systems, but due to this vulnerability, it doesn't really work. Now, U-Boot could check the size of the kernel it's loading, but this only works if it's loading it from a local disk. It does not load work if this kernel is provided via the network, for example, via TFTP. So far, there doesn't appear to be a patch for this problem. 
Well, and this is it for today. It's also time to announce our monthly Raspberry Pi winner. It's Nick for last month now. This month in November, I'm trying to do something a little bit different. I just created a new set of Internet Storm Center stickers. If you're interested in any of them, just send me a mailing address, for example, via the ISC contact form, or if you have my email address, just email me. I'm not sure how many of them I'll send out. Depends a little bit on how much many requests I get. If you want more than two or three, uh, just uh, let me know why. So, for example, if you want to hand them out to your team. Well, and this is it for today. So, thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.